Hey guys, let's move on to the second part of this section of the module 5, 6.03. We're talking about vectors. Last video we introduced vectors. We talked about what their magnitude is and how to write them in component form. And here we're going to talk about multiplying a vector or adding or subtracting vectors. That's kind of the next thing we can do with vectors. Okay, so uh, first example over here, I just have a vector r. Uh, and well, let's just practice writing that in component form. Remember the x component comes first. Looks like my vector r starts at the origin and has a positive x component of positive 3 and a y component of positive 2. So here are the coordinates of my, or the components of my vector r as y, uh, x component of 3, y component of 2. Now what would happen if I multiplied that vector by 2? This 2 is called a scalar, by the way, and I think you'll see why it's called a scalar in a second. So what if we took this vector and multiplied it by 2? What does that mean? That literally means to take each component and multiply those by 2 as well, right? So 2 times the x component is going to give me a positive 6. 2 times the y component is going to give me a positive 4, okay? So what is this vector? This is a vector, by the way, 2r. Since r is a vector, multiplying that vector by 2 gives us a new vector. Right? So what does that vector look like? Well, it has an x component, an x component of 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has a y component of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is the ending point of my vector, and it starts from here. Okay. Do you see why this is just called a scalar? Because really, all it did is it took my original vector r, and it scaled it up. It just doubled it, right? The x component is doubled, the y component is doubled, guess what? The magnitude is doubled as well. Okay? You could think of that in terms of similar triangles if you want to. You've got one right triangle that's just been scaled up to a larger right triangle. They're similar by this scale factor of 2. So multiplying a vector by anything, you just multiply the x and y components separately by that same value. What does that do? That just scales our vector up or down. Okay? If I wanted to make my vector smaller, I would multiply it by, instead of a number larger than 1, you'd multiply it by a number smaller than 1. That's going to shrink my vector down. Okay. If you wanted your vector, let's see what would happen if we multiplied it times a negative 2. Let's just change it. Well, negative 2 times 3 would be a negative 6, and negative 2 times 2 would be a negative 4. So now all of a sudden my vector is going back this way. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 down here. So it's literally the opposite vector of 2r. So positive 2r gives me this vector, negative 2r gives me that vector. So you, if you want to change, go an opposite, 180 degree opposite direction from your vector, you multiply that by a negative. Okay. Over here, I've got two different vectors. I've got a vector p and a vector q. We can just write their uh, component forms real quick. Okay. q is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the x and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for the y. There's my q in component form, and p, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and positive 1, 2. So there I've got p and I've got q both in component form. Okay, so what's going to happen if I add my vectors p plus q? What happens? I'm going to get a new vector. Okay, this p plus q, since p and q are both vectors, adding them up gives me a new vector as well. Okay, well, this is the same thing as p in component form, negative 6, 2, plus q in component form, 5, 6. Now, just like multiplying a vector, I multiply each component individually. Adding vectors, we just add the components individually. So this is as simple as adding the x values, negative 6 plus 5, negative 1, and then adding the y values, 2 plus 6, that gives me 8. Okay, so this is my new vector, p plus q. I have added my two vectors together. Now, what does that do if I graph that? Let's graph negative 1, 8. So negative 1, if I start at the origin, negative 1, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is my new, I'll draw it in purple. This is my new vector that I just added, p plus q. I got this purple vector here. This is p plus q. Now, it might not make much sense. How do I take this arrow and add this arrow and somehow get this arrow? How do these two, P, P and Q, add together to get this purple arrow? Well, mathematically, you see how adding the X components and the Y components gives us these 
two components, but geometrically you can see it if you take the tail end of Q, right, instead of the, the, the leading arrow end of Q, if you take the tail end of Q and move it over here to the leading end of P, the point of P, you'll see that if we shift this whole vector Q over here so that the tail end of Q is right on the same point as the um, leading end of P, we'll end up right here at P plus Q. Okay, so if I draw Q, if I take Q and I move it over here, okay, so this is my new Q, I know I'm getting cluttered here, but this vector right here is the same vector here, it's Q. I've just shifted its starting point over here so that it happens after P. So if you followed vector P and then followed vector Q after that, you'd end up at this ending point, which is where you would end up if you started from the origin and just followed the vector P plus Q. Okay, so essentially adding two vectors together is like doing the vectors one after the other, going P direction in length and then going Q direction in length. That will, you can, uh, like if I wanted to do P and then Q, the shortcut is to just do P plus Q. And you can get to that same location by doing uh, this vector P plus Q. So that is what it means to add vectors together. Okay, it's just to take the tail end of one and put it at the tip of the other. What about Q plus P? Same thing, guys. Q plus P would also be negative 1, 8. So I could also take P, this vector P, I could take the tail end of P, shift this whole thing over here and have it have the tail end of P touching the tip of Q and that would also give me the same purple vector P plus Q. So if I took this vector and shifted it over here, this is also P, it's just been shifted and has a new starting point now. It still ends up here and I get this vector P plus Q, the negative one eight vector. Okay. So in the end you form this sort of parallelogram looking thing. So if, the, if you take two vectors and they form two sides of a parallelogram, you can get the sum of those vectors by just connecting the two corners of that parallelogram. Okay. Um, so let's just do another quick example here. I'm going to draw uh, a composition of two vectors. So what if we wanted to do, uh, last thing, what if we wanted to do like um, P minus 3Q? Something else that we can calculate. You'll have to do stuff like this. So what's that doing? That is taking vector P, which was this vector here, right, negative 6, 2, and then subtracting three of these vectors, okay? So remember, a negative vector, the negative just flips the direction 180 degrees the opposite way. So negative Q is this vector down that goes this way, right? It's the opposite of Q. This right here would be negative Q. And negative three of those would be this scaled up three times. One, two, three. So it's this really long vector here. Negative three Q is this vector that's three of these, but in the opposite direction, right? That's the visual representation of negative three Q. So if we start with P and then we go negative three Q, we'll end up somewhere over here. And the resulting vector from doing this will be a big long vector that starts at the origin and goes to that end point from going positive 1p and the negative 3q. Okay, The geometric understanding of what's happening is the tricky part, but the math itself is so easy, guys. Literally, you take the coordinates of p, which we know are negative 6, 2, and then we subtract 3 times the coordinates of q, which are 5, 6. So we could literally write it like this. p is negative 6, 2, and I'm subtracting 3 times the coordinates of q, which is 5, 6. Okay, so I know I've got to multiply this by 3 first before I subtract. We're still doing the order of operations just like before. Okay, so that's negative 6, 2. Uh, and that's going to be plus, and I'll distribute the negative 3 in. Right, so that's going to be negative 15 and negative 18. Okay, which gives me, now I can add the x coordinates, negative 6 plus negative 15, negative 21. And then 2 plus negative 18, uh, negative 16. Okay, so negative 21, negative 16, that makes sense. Negative 21, negative 16, that's going to be that um, quadrant 3 vector that I uh, tried to explain a few moments ago. So we just learned how to multiply a vector and what that looks like on the graph. Uh, 
how to add and subtract vectors and what that would look like on a graph, and then how to do both and sort of what that uh, would look like on a graph. Um, but really, all you're going to have to do for your assignment is say, okay, this, these are the coordinates of P, these are the coordinates of Q, uh, now calculate this. And it's literally just a matter of multiplying, adding, subtracting in the right order. So I know that's something you guys can do. Okay, hope that helped. Dang, a 10-minute video this time? Jeez. If there was a way to make these shorter, I would, guys. Let me know uh, if this is helpful. Please um, hit me on Remind or something with your questions or see me in Zoom. I'll do my best to, to help you guys when I can.